This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. Hello and welcome to the Rising Stars of Comedy. I'm Akriti Thiyagi, one of India's top three female comedians. Our guest for today wears her political views well on her sleeve. This postgraduate in geography, urban planning and law from UCLA first appeared in the US comedy scene wearing a kurta, a bindi and a neatly tied plaid. Her sets don't quite accentuate the prim in Primlani. Please welcome Vasu Primlani. Kevin. Um, I've performed across the world in uh, New York and San Francisco and um, Miami and all over India. So I'm one of the top three female comics in India today. <laughs> also one of the only three female comics in India today. <laughs> There's a point in the life of every Indian girl when she grows from being a didi to being an auntie. It could be marriage or it could be some invisible barrier she crosses. I knew I'd cross that barrier when I was in the marketplace one day and this kid came and tugged on my shirt and said, uncle, uncle. <laughs> she doesn't look like a comedian, does she? One of India's top three female comedian guys. Yes, that's her style. Do not confuse it for anything else. Her style is deadpan. Hello, Asu. Hey. Okay, <laughs> that's very, very awkward. She's clearly not going to say, say hello. 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 <laughs> now, use, now use your American accent and say hello. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Yeah, all right then. So you were brought up in the US for almost 17 years before you came back to India. Yeah. Was the transition any difficult? It was interesting because I had to throw out all my American material. Um, the thing is, in, in the United States, it, it's all cultural allusions, right? Sure. Jokes are about the culture yeah. and the um, current events. Uh, so I Indians cannot relate to the American culture. So I had to throw that out and build an entire new set on India. But was the transition as a female comedian in terms of o audience, in terms of the material that you use, very, very different as compared to the US? Well, somewhat different, particularly in Delhi, yeah. because there's so much patriarchy, there's a very... Uh, decided gender divide right the men it's men versus the women yeah which plays for you and yeah. against you in that it gives you a lot of material yeah uh, in the men versus women category facial hair and a guy really tells you a lot about him like for instance i mean if there's a guy who's clean shaven he's like i'm domesticated i'm housebroken you can kiss me all over my face <laughs> then there are those just hair grew around them kind of just you know, they're, they're clearly single, they don't know what to do about it. Uh, they're helpless in the hands of their hair. Then there's the beards and the sardars of the, of the world. They're just a challenge to every sardani across the world. Himmata to pasa. Himmata to kiss kar. Doon, doon, kaan kiss karegi? You seem to have a very Congenial rapport across the board in the circuit. Has it ever been that you had to face some sort of, uh, you know, very stringent behavior that was ever off-putting? From the comedians? Yes. 
Uh, they've been a very loving community because we, we respect professionals. Of course. And we respect talent. Yes. So it, all that matters. It's really not the comedian's opinion as much because it's between the comedian and, and the audience. Yeah. If it works for the audience, then our opinion doesn't matter, right? So as long as the audience is happy, the comedians are happy. So it's a very professional uh, community in India, the, com the comedians. You have, as I mentioned, you have a pro postgraduate in geography, urban planning, law. What pushed you into comedy? I, it's just, it's just the absurdity that we face on a daily basis in India, in the U.S., in the world. Things that don't make sense uh, is what's prime material for comedy. And always had a sense of humor, and it's such a blessing to make people laugh. It is such a blessing. I mean, people come to our shows and they've like had a breakup or have just been fired and, and we just turn their lives around and they're laughing and falling over the seats. There's nothing more sacred to me than that. Uh, did your parents ever object to you coming into comedy, taking comedy as a full-time profession? Not in the least. My parents are the most progressive parents in the world. Um, and they even came to my show. They okay. had, on my 40th birthday, both my father and my mother attended my show. Oh, how sweet. Yeah. When I got back from the US, I realized that we as Indians do some funny things with the English language. We make singular into plural and plural into singular where it's not warranted. So people be like, oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> or they be like, ni baitne de ladies hai. <laughs> what according to you is the universal purpose of comedy apart from making people laugh? Apart from making people laugh is making people think and helping people change. Like there's this set I do about Delhi men yeah. and how they behave towards women. Yeah. And I did this open air for the transgender community in Delhi. And one Muslim guy came up to me afterwards. Mm. He was approximately 57 years old. He came up to me, he said, Actually brings about real change. Right there, the guy recognized himself. Yeah. He said, yeah, that's not, that's not right. Yeah. And he said, I won't ever again. I've seen you actually call women on the stage to show what they go through in a yeah. way. Yeah. Have you ever faced any flack from that end in the sense that, oh my God, no. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm one of the most physical comedians yeah. in India. I do physical interaction and there was once in Mumbai that this woman raised her hand on stage oh my to God. slap me right across my face. And it was really embarrassing because the next thing out of my mouth was, don't it turns me on. And it just, the audience just <laughs> fell over laughing and I was like, I can't believe I just said that. Right? You have to be like completely transparent in front of the audience. And she called me on it. She's not taking any shit from me. She's like, you're insolent and you'll get slapped, right? And women have actually also like, I do this, you know, Indian in line behind yeah. me set. They just shake so much. They just drop the magazine they're holding and leave the stage. That's happened to I'm like, come back. Like, please come and then I have to get someone else. It's, it's, it's very sweet. So what's going to happen is you're going to be me. You're going to pretend to be me. And you're going to pretend to hold up a phone. Not the real phone, please. Just pretend to hold up a phone. Go ahead. Yeah. Great. Actually, it's a smartphone, so. Right here. Yeah. Great. Thing is, I have never been this close to someone. <laughs> and have to pretend I don't know them. It's uncomfortable for you. It's tragic for me. It's tragic because I have to tell these women, please, please do not touch me. It's tragic because I like women to touch me. <laughs> and you know, I can always tell when there's an Indian in line behind me. Like, if you could just hold that and face that way, yeah, and open it, right. I can always tell, like as an American, we are taught to stop right here, like personal space, yeah? Um, but I can always tell there's an Indian in line behind me when this happens. <laughs> there is no guidebook to being a mother. 
I was sitting right next to my mother. My sister was sitting across the table. She did something she wasn't supposed to. My mother turned around, slapped me right across the face. I'm like, but I didn't do anything. She's like, sorry, beta, you were closer. 